The New York Supreme Court has officially ordered the NYPD to release thousands, literally thousands of documents revealing their surveillance tactics toward members of Black Lives Matter. These are activists who protested in the wake of George Floyd's murder in 2020. Now, before we give the details on the most recent ruling, I think it's important to understand the context here and the background of this case. Amnesty International is very much front and center in this effort to reveal these documents. And on September 15th of 2020, Amnesty International requested a list of documents related to the procurement of facial recognition, drones, gate recognition, and other surveillance technology between March 1st of 2020 through September 1st of 2020. Now, they requested the documents, they were denied the documents. And I should note, you might be curious, I was certainly curious about so called Gate recognition, what is that? Well, gate recognition systems use the shape of the human body and the way it moves in order to identify it. The software, which I'm guessing is faulty, just like facial recognition technology, uses what's referred to as CV algorithms. It detects a human silhouette on video and analyzes its movements. The data then creates a human behavioral model. And again, these surveillance tactics are certainly problematic, technologically speaking. We had, they've been faulty to say the least. But the question is, who are they surveilling? How were they surveilling them? Um, and Amnesty International says that the NYPD has more than 15,280 surveillance cameras at intersections all across the city, which have allegedly been used to identify and prosecute and persecute BLM protesters. So here's just one example of the NYPD abusing surveillance power. There's Derek Ingram, who's a 28 year old co-founder of Warriors in the Garden. He was targeted by officers in riot gear during an hours long NYPD raid on August 7th of 2020. After allegedly shouting into a police officer's ear during a June protest against police brutality. A spokesperson for the NYPD confirmed that facial recognition software was used during the course of that investigation. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the charges against him were eventually dropped. So he had a felony assault charge against him that was downgraded and then eventually dropped altogether. And then in the public records request, Amnesty International wrote that the use of this technology, facial recognition and surveillance technology by the NYPD, could have some serious human rights concerns, especially when we have past evidence indicating that these surveillance techniques are often faulty and can end up accusing innocent people of crimes they have not committed. Now, the NYPD denied the request, but Amnesty International and the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project, known as STOP, took the department to court. Okay, so this is where the new news comes in. The NYPD initially argued that an initial search for responsive records produced over 30 million emails, and it would be unreasonably burdensome some to comply with the request. But lawyers for Amnesty International and the NYPD have met since and the groups have narrowed down what they're asking for to just 2,700 documents. And the most recent update is that on Friday, the New York Supreme Court Justice Lawrence Love rejected the NYPD stance and ruled that the department must release to the groups any records not exempted under the state's public records law. Love ordered the groups to resubmit their public records request and for the NYPD to either turn over the documents or specifically identify which exemption prohibits the release of each one. So Dr. Richie, Rashad Richie, this is good news, especially because Amnesty International and the general public will now have access to these NYPD records, which we should have had access to from the very beginning, considering yeah. the fact that these are public servants paid with taxpayer money. Yeah, I like what Justice Love did here. I wish it would have been a little more concrete uh, and no explanation could be provided, but I don't think they're going to find a legal explanation to withhold these documents anyway. Let me say this, the CIA, it is illegal for the CIA to put citizens under surveillance domestically. Why? Primarily because of their massive surveillance capabilities and the lack of prerequisite mandate for an investigation. 
they don't have the same due process uh, responsibility. But it seems as if the New York Police Department is operating as the de facto CIA, where they're putting a massive number of citizens under surveillance who have committed absolutely no crime whatsoever. And then refusing to adhere to a simple request because this information is now part of the public record. Why are they operating as an outfit external of the normative rules? Here's why, because they always have. You see, police, they have always felt as if their governmental agency is special and should not be held accountable as any other governmental agency, even though they get their money from the same place, us taxpayers. They get their directive from the same place, policy holders or policy uh, or politicians that actually implement policy and give them their scope, their range of operation. So I find it interesting, once again, we're talking about the culture of policing and how on paper, on policy, it's right, okay? They're supposed to give this information by way of request as part of public record. But in culture, what have they done? They have done exactly what they are accustomed to doing, operating outside of the rules and saying basically the rules do not apply to us. So I like the ruling from the judge. I wish it would have been a little more concrete and we will see if there's any more legal maneuvering after the justice has said you gotta turn this stuff over if you do not have an actual legal exemption or not. Exactly, and it's really important for the public to have access to these documents because there needs to be oversight. Mm -hmm. There needs to be assurances that the NYPD is not abusing its power. And more importantly, if innocent people are being surveilled, that is a human rights abuse. It is a form of intimidation toward individuals who are engaging in their First Amendment rights, in their ability to assemble, in their ability to protest, in their ability to express political speech. And what I find so fascinating about the police response to the protests that took place in the summer of 2020 is that while on one hand, they purport to care so much about the businesses that were looted, they seem to do very little, if nothing really, to protect those businesses because their, the entirety of their response was focused on persecuting, surveilling, and demonizing the activists who were protesting on the streets, not the looters, the protesters. Yeah. I think it, that's telling to say the least. That's right. And you got to think about the irony of this. I mean, the people are protesting uh, police brutality, uh, police negligence, uh, the use of excessive force, police corruption. And in the middle of that protest, literally the way they are surveilling the individuals protesting them is corrupt itself. Uh, police departments are out of damn control. And this is why it takes leadership to rein them in. And you have some DAs who are doing it throughout this country. Not enough, but we gotta get more and better leadership in those positions to hold cops accountable.